All right, we are live. I am so excited to have here today the Foundation Schools, um, and this is Kermit, and I um, am, again, just so appreciative of this opportunity. And this is a series that in an uh, episode that you do not want to miss out on because I am confident that your children, or if you know someone, will be very much impacted and get a lot of great information that you can pass around in our community. And so if you're new here, please let us know if you're listening live or on playback. Uh, this is our spotlight series where we interview different businesses and nonprofit organizations and freelancers. And so uh, right now, I just want to go ahead and, and introduce Kelly. Uh, she is actually the Director of Communications and Development at the Foundation Schools. And so why don't you tell us a little bit more about the Foundation Schools, where you guys are located, and your primary mission for those who are not familiar. Thank you, Carol. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me to be part of the Spotlight Series and the Foundation Schools. And I get so excited about talking about the incredible work that we do for kids with emotional and behavioral and behavioral health challenges and autism. We are located around the Washington Metropolitan Beltway. We have three schools. There are two ED schools, one in Largo, Maryland, which serves grades K through 12. We have an autism program in Largo, Maryland, as well in Prince George's County that serves K through six. And then we have a program in Montgomery County that serves ED students in grades basically three through 12. So wow. we serve about 300 students around the Washington Beltway every year. Wow. Yeah, and, and those are really great because, you know, with having children who do have different challenges, you know, especially with learning, to have a great support system, such as the foundation schools, is really essential to, you know, just like a part of what you guys do is really helping to take them to their next mission and success in their own lives. How does your role um, kind of support the school? Tell us a little bit about your specific role and what you do for um, the foundation schools. Sure, my role is a little bit of a long story that I will put very briefly. I started there 30 years ago. The foundation wow. schools were founded in 1975 and we are celebrating our 45th anniversary this very year. And I've been there 30 years this very year. And it's just an amazing mission, what we do for kids. So I started there as a therapist, working directly with students one-on-one, -on -one, helping them to overcome their challenges and find new ways of coping and figuring out, you know, how to be successful in school and in life. You know, the things mm -hmm. that you find that you figure out in school translate to your life as a whole. You know, there's always those people that invest in you and help you figure out, you know, how to work with your strengths and how to work around your liabilities. And our students, mm -hmm. because they have very serious emotional and behavioral disabilities, they they have a lot of challenges to conquer. So I started mm -hmm. working one-on-one, -on -one, which was fabulous. I've been there a long time. Mm -hmm. I've held a lot of different positions over the years, but being the director of communications and development helps me to help all the students by garnering resources and support on a large level through grants and contributions and relationships in the community, such as the one I've made with you when we first met, when you presented at a conference. And that's part of what um, has really been a passion for me. I miss working individually with the kids because they're amazing. And to see them grow and flourish and conquer their um, challenges is just an unbelievable um, thing to watch. Yeah, and isn't that the beauty of working at an organization from the beginning? Because you, like what you just said, you were a therapist. So you've been able to have the, it's ingrained in you about what the mission of your organization is, what the purpose is. How, you're able to kind of give that feedback in so many different ways. And, you know, I think that that's something that just as your role individually is what makes it so valuable because you can say, hey, I've been there. I've work with these students. Here's a way that we can create improvement here. Here's a way that we can support these students here. And so I think that's beautiful. And 
you touched on it, but you guys have been around for a very long time. And so it's, uh, you know, to already have such a huge impact of being around for over 40 years, having already served over 300 students currently in this area, you know, can you share us the history? Because I, I know that I've um, done research on it and it is fascinating. And I would love for the viewers to see just kind of how everything has evolved over time to what it is today. Absolutely. We started in the psychiatric hospitals in Montgomery County and in the District of Columbia. So we were attached to the hospitals. We had day schools there, but we also um, provided educational programs for the students who were hospitalized there. Mm -hmm. And that began from our founder, Dr. John Meeks, who was a psychiatrist at the facility. And kids were, back then, stayed in the hospital often for a year or 18 months, and they had no schooling. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were missing out. So they had these challenges, but then they had this overlay of then they've missed their education. And he said the work of student of children was education. So he mm -hmm. made it his mission to bring schools to the children. And then eventually in 1993, we broke away from the hospitals and became freestanding schools, at which we have been ever since. Um, wow. you know, being our own private, nonprofit, non-public schools. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's very, that's very great because it shows kind of, again, the heart of that one person and how that can go from just evolving into such a great and impactful organization. Why don't you just touch on, you know, just explaining, um, how your learning environment is beneficial for students with emotional disabilities and social emotional learning challenges like touch on just the environment that you all create um, that makes it so beneficial and why anyone who's viewing this um, should definitely consider this if their children are going through that or if they know someone, um, you know, a parent or friend that, that has children that could be uh, using this service as in school. Sure. Our schools are very highly tailored individual programs for our, to meet our students' needs. Our students all have IEPs, individualized education programs. So they come to us having had a lot of disruptions in their education because often they're trying to find the best fit. Like because mm -hmm. of their disabilities, you know, they have to be evaluated and then they try different classroom settings. They may try, mm -hmm. you know, a co-teaching. They may move them to a different wing. They may try another school. So our kids go through a lot of unfortunately failures before they get to us. So our program is very highly structured for them and very small. We have generally 10, no more than 12 kids in the classroom mm -hmm. with a minimum of two adults. If you come see us, which we hope and some of you will when we get to open again, is that we have just an enormous amount of staff in each classroom. You'll see probably eight kids and six staff in a lot of our classrooms. Mm -hmm. We are very staff intensive because our kids' needs are very intensive. Um, yeah. So we not only have special edu master special education teachers on hand, we have behavior specialists, we have program assistants in the classroom, we have dedicated therapists who are in the program. So they wow. go on field trips, they come into the classroom, they help kids, you know, devise goals for their behavior about how to improve. They provide individual and group. So they get to watch the kids' social skills in real time and help them manage some of those things. Because that's a lot of reasons that our kids don't do as well in the public school because they get into other things with their peers and have difficulty navigating some of the relationships. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we are very intensive in terms of staffing and we have a lot of auxiliary programs to help our kids because our kids have a wealth of needs. So we have a foundation links program that goes into our students' homes and helps wow. their parents as well. Yes, they help them to parent. We help with basic needs. We help to make sure kids aren't missing school because once they become disengaged from education, it's hard to get them back on track. Um, so we do so much outside of just the schooling. Um, we have a career connections program. We feed all of our kids. Our kids, we have um, about 80% qualify for free and reduced price lunch. Wow. So yes, our kids have a lot of needs. Some of our kids have experienced very difficult traumatic mm -hmm. histories. 
So that's the reason for all these additional adjunctive services to help take care of our kids. So when you, you know, I love that you talked about how just they get that individual attention and that they're small classroom sizes because that honestly, I think is it, I think it's key for any student to really get that, you know, high quality education and getting that one on one support. But you touched on so many different benefits, um, which I absolutely think is essential to especially children who have these different challenges when it comes to coming home and helping with the parents and all those different things. And then you touched on the fact that these students um, a lot of them qualify for free and reduced lunches. And how do you, um, like when it comes to parents who are like, yes, this is something I need for my child. Do you have financial aid available for students or, you know, for the students and for the parents to be able to help when it comes to, um, since you are a nonprofit, like how do people, how do parents get connected with you into the program? Um, and if there's any fees or any um, thing like that, that they would need to know. Students actually come to us, they are referred by their home public school system when they have exhausted all their resources to meet their needs. So when okay. students are referred to us based on their IEP, you know, through federal law from IDEA, kids are, can be placed with us. We're on the continuum of services. Got and it. tuition is paid for by the county as well as transportation as a related service. So Perfect. there is no cost to the parents for those kids who qualify. And it is um, a process for the counties to identify, assess, and refer students to us. Okay. And we get students, our primary uh, referring jurisdictions are Montgomery County, Prince George's County, and the District of Columbia. And we do get some from outlying counties as well. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. So when the student already has been identified, as you said, as for an IEP, that's when they'll be able to the school will be able to say, hey, here's a continuum of resources. The foundation schools is another option for you. I would highly recommend. And then that way people um, can get connected with you there. That's, that's excellent. And for those who, you know, say, hey, I just love your mission. Um, are they able to donate directly to you all? Um, is there a way to people, for people to support your mission in other ways as well? Absolutely. We are a 5013C and we accept donations through our website, um, through checks. We love to build a relationship and cultivate a relationship in person whenever possible and introduce them to our amazing kids and our just unbelievable staff. Um, yeah. I think it's what we do is um, really an intuitive gut thing. You know, you feel it, mm -hmm. you see it, you know, you can see the care and concern and compassion that our staff have for our kids every day and the resiliency of our kids. You know, our founder, Dr. Meese, called them the most courageous kids and they really are. And so are our staff. You know, our yeah. kids have really difficult lives and yeah. a lot of challenges that they navigate every day, uh, more than most of us have, you know, in our entire life. So we really um, are very dedicated to and committed helping our students overcome and become productive citizens. You know, we yeah. really want them to be able to see other opportunities for themselves and see a, a different future for them. Yeah. That I never otherwise have imagined. So yeah, and yeah. so people who can help us and contribute to, you know, kids being able to be um, tax paying citizens and become yeah. reach their full potential like all we want right. our children and all children so we are grateful to everyone who has donated and support us in the past and we entertain all kinds of things we also take you know we've taken used computers we've taken used furniture you know we've taken other in-kind donations we have school supplies drives um thanksgiving drives we adopt students at the holidays because there are just mm -hmm. so many so there are lots of ways that people can partner with us to help our students. That, you know, and you've touched on this a couple of times, and I want people to understand, you know, like you said, these students have a lot of the times a very rough history. And there is a lot that these students are going with. And like what you said, your, 
you're trying to have something to reach their full capacity because it's, it's helping them build the bridge. They have the capacity, but it's to reach that full capacity with some support and just say, hey, I'm here with you. Uh, you're, you know, you don't have to go through this by yourself. And then same thing to the parents to say, I'm with you too. And I, we can help you with, with this as well. And so um, I really do encourage everyone who is listening right now to click on the link that we just put in the chat to help support this really incredible organization. And I would love to hear, and I know the listeners would as well, but to share a success story and just a couple of stories of the students that you, that you do have. Um, there was a, uh, someone in the comments who actually have said that they have a lot of clients who've attended foundation over the years and that you guys are heroes. And so uh, I think that is, that's so sweet. And, um, but we would love to hear some stories from some of the current students or past students as well. Thank you for that amazing comment. You know, we, our staff really are heroes, our kids, you know, I would love to share this. Um, we just had graduation and we are, it's a difficult road for our kids. They have a lot of obstacles to overcome, but when they make it, we are all celebrating. So I really want to read this directly and yeah. share it with you. Um, Tatiana is 20 and she just graduated this a couple weeks ago in June here. She summed up the impact of the foundation schools this way. She says, my days at the foundation school were very hard and I would get mad at myself because I didn't like the problem, but I would always ask for help and they would help. They cared and wanted to see me graduate. When I say I can't do it, the staff pushed me to do better and not give up on myself. Mm -hmm. They believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. They mm -hmm. helped me graduate. Yes, I gave them a hard time and I fought a lot, but they still cared and wanted to see me graduate. I never had someone care about me that much and want me to finish school. I love all my staff and I'm going to miss them. I am happy that I did it and that you helped me. Wow. I mean, that really says it all and better than anything that I could have come up with, right? I mean, if, yeah. if this is a kid who's 20 who's graduated, right? Her path has not been straight and she's very clear about how difficult it's been for her. And um, if you're not moved by those kinds of stories of young people fighting the hardest fight mm. to attain something that we take for granted, a lot of us, a high school diploma. But in this country, there are still kids who are fighting for that and calling, calling for that. And with somebody in their life that can encourage them and stand by them, no matter how tough it is going, we know all our kids can attain that and more. So I really, yeah, it's a great, it's a great story. I mean, it's just amazing. That, that really, uh, that got me teared up because, I mean, just even when she said how you, you all cared about her and you were the only ones who did, I mean, just all of that, it just, I think that really does encompass what you all do in helping supporting people. It's not just even about education. Mm -hmm. It's about being in their life to show that you actually care. And that uh, some of these students, they don't even like have anyone in their life that's genuinely caring for them to succeed and can, or even has the capacity to, you know? And so it's not only just that, you know, you know, there could be, you know, definitely some personal issues in their family, but then also just as parents to not have that capacity to, or that they were never taught that. So it's just a generational, generational thing and you know what you guys did was just break a generational you know just pattern and so now she's going to be able to just continue to go off and you know like you said just be successful and so thank you so much for sharing that I think that that um if you don't mind actually if you could share that uh, maybe email me that story. I'd love to post that story, just uh, uh, some of those things and share that because if anyone who has not been able to listen to the whole thing, uh, you know, that I think encompasses exactly why people need to support this organization. You you guys are actually really changing lives and, and that's, um, that yeah. should not be taken lightly at all. And we do it really um, one time. So, you know, you know, really one child at a time. 
that's how we do you know there are other right. charities who reach you know big numbers and all of that we're quite different in that this is a very individual thing it's a very relational thing our staff are the change agents for those kids and it's one child at a time and with the community's help and you know with everybody behind a, a child we can make a true difference yeah and, and you you present and you prove that in your in your learning environment, you know, just everything that you do is to give individual attention to every student, and so that they, you know, like you said, one child at a time. Also, supporting one child at a time, even in the classroom with the smaller classroom sizes, and just continuing to um, provide those support. And that is what is your in a sense value proposition if you were to say in business terms because you are able you know you could have thousands upon thousands at one time but just to say you know we're going to continue to support um just again it's about the impact not just about the numbers not just about you know how many students can we get in and out of our school it's about okay making sure that we're giving quality education quality support to every single student that's there. Absolutely, so. and our thousands have, we have impacted thousands over our 45 years. And we are exactly. just honored and privileged to be able to serve these kids and help them mm -hmm. find their way. Yeah. Well, I'm just so grateful to have you on here. I, you know, I think that it's, uh, this is actually, uh, you know, you guys, just your just your mission overall and all transparency it it just it really it, it it really cuts to the core because it's the next generation and it's so important that we support that just uh, from any from any walk of life um and like you said it's just giving that hands up and, and in any way uh, do you guys have volunteer opportunities for people to be a, involved with as well or um, I know you touched on the other opportunities. Is there ways that people could come in and help and volunteer or um, any of that kind of opportunity? That's difficult for us just because the nature of training and yeah. you know, that people need to work with our kids and, you know, finger, fingerprinting and all. There's just a whole yeah. lot in terms of our regulations. We're very heavily regulated by the State Department of Education. So that would be difficult for that some of that to happen. So we really do lean on our volunteers to help us organize school supplies drives and holiday right. drives and food drives for us. And that's the primary. And unfortunately, we also have a benefit every year and we get a lot of volunteers helping us with that, getting auction items and all that. And we did have to cancel that in March and, you know, yeah. we hope in the future, you know, that we will be able to get back to that because that is a great place for our volunteers to be involved with us. We also, you know, we have a volunteer board as well for people who are willing to contribute at different levels as well. That's the other opportunity that happens for our school as well. But, you know, we love to um, be able to coordinate and cultivate and have people follow us and support us. We're on yeah. Facebook and Twitter and our website. We have our social media feed. So there are certain people who can reach out to us or me individually. We'd love to cultivate a relationship, however people think they might be able to who are in our children's lives. I love that. Is there anything um, that we have not touched on that you would like to bring up here today? Um, I think you hit it on the head when you said, you know, we really need to encourage the next generation because I think that not everyone understands that there are still kids that are really struggling in this country mm -hmm. for very basic things that we all take for granted. And I think that that is part of why I'm here and have stayed here and am passionate about this mission. Um, you know, the underdog is my hero, you know, mm -hmm. to have them be able to triumph over all the things that they have to, and the courage and the resilience that they show to reach, you know, their goals and mm -hmm. make this happen for themselves. And as you say, it also happens for everybody after them and for their cousins and for their brothers and sisters. So the impact really does make a ripple effect. So um, the work is really important. And we, like I said, we're very honored to be able to 
work with these kids and help them see a brighter future. Well, thank you so much for coming on here today. Uh, uh, for you said that people can connect with you directly. Uh, would you like to share your email and ways that people can connect with you? Absolutely. You can reach me at k k u n e r t at foundationschools.org. Perfect. Please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. And we will do a recap that we will post tomorrow with all of this wonderful information as well um, for anyone uh, who wants to stay connected there too. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for coming on here and just explaining the heart of the foundation schools. And I am just really honored to be able to have an opportunity to speak with you all because you guys really do deserve to have even more visibility than you already do because you guys are changing lives every single day. And so thank you so much for all of your faithfulness and the work that you've been doing with this organization. And I am very excited to stay connected with you and everyone who is listening and who has been with us since the whole time or hopped in at different points. Thank you so much for listening in. And we highly encourage you to follow them on social media and to connect with Kelly directly and so that we can all help make a difference together. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Well, have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you all next Thursday. Thank you.